right. Well, hello, hello, and welcome everyone to our BG5 Live. We have Natalie back with us. Welcome, Natalie. Great to have you back. And uh, first, uh, let's take a look at what we're going to take a, take a look at today, and then we'll uh, introduce our panel, and then we will jump right in. So today, which is, uh, it is August 13th, 2019. This is episode number 19. And what we are going to be taking a look at today is formalizing logical answers. So that's what we're gonna be taking a look at today. So before we jump in, let's uh, say a big hello and welcome to our panel. And once again, let's start with uh, Natalie. Natalie, welcome back from, from, your, from your vacation, from your yeah. adventure. Great to Thank have you. you back. Yes, I'm so happy to be here again. <laughs> Great. It was lovely. It was lovely. I went to Spain. It was beautiful. nice. Very nice. Well, welcome back. And, uh, and Chris, hello. Hey, welcome everyone. Glad to have you back, Natalie, looking all tan and refreshed. And uh, welcome everyone on Facebook and in the BG Live, BG5 Live room. We're glad you're here. Welcome. Beautiful. And uh, again, welcome, Chris and Lavina. Welcome. Everybody, great to be here. So glad you could join us today. Excellent. All right. So without any further ado, let's jump in. And again, if you are uh, joining us via Facebook Live, please feel free to, uh, to type, type in the comments area. Lavina is going to be monitoring, monitoring Facebook. And uh, also, if you're here live with us in the BG5 Live room, um, again, a huge welcome. If you would like to participate, if you'd like to share, uh, we can unmute you. So, um, so feel free to, to raise your hand if there's something that you would like to add to the conversation. Um, and, and you can also type in your comments as well. And, uh, and that way we can include them in the conversation. If you're listening to this later on, either uh, Facebook or Vimeo or YouTube, again, invite you to, uh, to type in your comments, type in your questions as we go through. So as I mentioned before, what we're going to be taking a look at today is formalizing, uh, formalizing logical answers. So today is a trait four day. So we're gonna explore trait number four. This is about formalization. This is also youthful folly. This is about logic. And uh, so if we take a look at what this is all about, formalization, an answer is an answer, it's a formula, and an answer in a formula that really is only just a potential. And we'll talk more about that as we go along. This is the energy to beguile and succeed despite ignorance. We have the youthful folly. And logic protects us also from misfortune. And it's also freedom from retribution. So what we're talking about is we're kind of talking about that logical formalization of putting together or recognizing patterns and then from those patterns formalizing you know an answer formalizing a formula you know what is a, a logical explanation for whatever something happens to be so uh to kick things off um chris anything that you would like to, to <laughs> <laughs> to say about formalization, <laughs> about trait four, about that logical process of uh, coming up with answers. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you know what I really like about this? Or I love this. An answer or a formula is only a potential. And I think that that's really key because we have a tendency, and I think um, I do not have the four in my design, but uh, trait four but when I'm speaking with my clients, often I'll say, you know, one of the things to recognize is that you sort of can see everything as a problem to be solved. And, and when you see the world that way, which in the mind, it's easy to do, you may start to see that that's the way it is and that it's sort of like, well, I see a solution, so therefore there must be a problem. Or I, and instead of going, well, maybe this is just a potential problem and a potential solution. And I think it's, it really speaks to not being coming, becoming attached to any one solution, any one 
way of solving a problem, that it's really just a potential way of solving it. And I think that um, that's one of the things that's striking me right now about this one. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. How about for you, Lavina? Oh, it looks like we can't hear you. Yeah, there now we, we can. Okay. I'm wondering what this freedom from retribution is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, what is that all about? To be able to get away with, look, the energy to beguile and succeed despite ignorance. Like, how does that work? How, how do we, why is it that our collective world believes in logic? Oh, it's logical. Oh, there's facts and figures. And yet you can manipulate the data however you want to. We yeah. can see that from statistics. They can put facts behind anything in order to bolster their results. So it's just like, why is that? Why, why are we like that? I don't know. Maybe it's a mystery. Yeah. Mm. Very, very interesting. And, and, and we're going to be looking into and diving into that a bit further to really get to the bottom of just like what you said, you know, what is this energy to beguile, you know, mm -hmm. and to succeed despite ignorance, right? So we're going to explore that a bit more as we go through today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything, Natalie, that you would like to add? Well, um, I have the format uh, energy, the format strength of uh, the logical circuitry, so the 952. So, and, and it's, I, I'm not sure how to distinguish the opposite of the, the mind one, but I do um, recognize uh, uh, the logical process and, and, and the, the reasoning and, and, and also recognize that a reasoning could be logically like a you know a, a a consistency but then in reality it doesn't work that way yeah and yeah. Uh, so it's it's logic is very interesting it's, yes it is it's both and not <laughs> exactly and if we take a look at actually where it is if we take a look at even even in our mind you know it's set up in left brain and right brain right? We're talking about the function of conceptualization, right? And this is about seeking answers. You know, if you don't have uh, conceptualization defined, it's always trying to be certain. So, you know, so we're trying to find certainty and we get this pressure to try to find certainty through, you know, the inspiration gives that pressure to conceptualization to, to find some kind of certainty. And one of the reasons why we don't want to make decisions from our mind, right? So oftentimes we can make decisions from this logic. We don't want to make decisions from our mind because our mind does operate in a binary. It's a left or a right, right? It's logical or it's emotional. It is this or that. And so again, we have to be very careful when we're taking a look at logic. Remember, it is also collective. So it plays into our collective beliefs and what we believe also about reality. And one of the things that's interesting, I, I talk a lot about this, and I think I've, I've talked about it in, in our BG5 Live in the past too, that we are in this major time of transition. And to also consider what if, what if everything that we have been taught, everything that we have come to believe is true, is not true. And I think whenever there's these shifting times, it's also going to rock our world as far as our logic goes. So, you know, we, we had started to allude to this, but I do want to talk a little bit about logic. Logic does not equal truth. That was kind of what, what Chris was alluding to. So there is a, some, an assumption that logic is correct. So we assume that what we believe and what, you know, these facts and figures show, we have this tendency to assume that logic is correct, but you can lie with logic, just as, you know, uh, we were starting to discuss earlier. You can also cheat with logic. You can pervert with logic. And when we take a look at logic, it is about formulas. And I, I'd like you to think of what people believe and how we believe things. You know, it is enforced and conditioned over and over and over again. And it doesn't have to be true. 
So this is kind of a reality check, if you will, because if we hear something over and over and over and over, we have the logic to think, oh, well, everybody else is talking about it. Everyone else believes this way. Everyone, you know, all of the experts has, have said this is the way that it is. But just because it's been repeated over and over and over and over and over again does not necessarily mean that it's true. And even if you question it, you can just make up your own logic. Right. So, you know, one of the big buzzwords out there uh, in in the media right now is conspiracy theory, you know, <laughs> and everybody is calling everybody else's beliefs, everybody else's, you know, thoughts or truths conspiracy. So now what is conspiracy and what is truth? It's, it's really difficult to know right now. And that's part of the process that we're in right now, which is, you know, it's it can be a bit disconcerting. But it is part of this process, as we've talked about before, moving from this, mm, you know, this pattern of illusion and delusion and moving into wisdom. And so as we move towards wisdom, we have to start seeing what are those, what are those places that logic has come into play where things have been repeated over and over and over and over again that we now believe that may not necessarily be true. So this is the way that our very existence can be manipulated. And this is kind of a scary statement. Um, you know, one of the things that we take a look at in OC16 um, is we take a look at the different circuitries in OC16. And the logical circuitry in OC16 can have a profound effect on what we believe as truth through the logical process and again, you can have some of the most perverse um, mm, things that are justified by logic, right? That's why, that's why it can beguile, you know, it's kind of like, oh, well, there's proof to this, see, you know, but you've manipulated the statistics, you've manipulated the numbers, you've repeated something over and over and over again. And um, again, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. Mm. Mm -hmm. Anything that uh, any of our panel would like to add or anyone on Facebook or in our BG5 Live? You know, I'm thinking about um, even as, as children or we, we have an experience, an emotional experience, let's say, and our mind immediately wants to try to make sense mm -hmm. of it. We are always seeking to make sense of our world. And so even from, uh, you know, we live in a car, we live in a, a cause and effect sort of reality, right? So you have a loud noise or you get a try as a child, you get bitten by a dog. Therefore, the logic is that dogs, all dogs bite, all dogs are bad, then I'm afraid of it and it makes sense. So there's a, even if it's faulty, the, mm -hmm. the mind just likes to have things sort of neatly so it can sort it out and put it in the right place so the world can make sense. And that's how we can see things that are very shocking, like that, a trauma or something, or shocking in the news. Mm. And our mind immediately goes, how could this be? And so someone says, well, this person was nearby, or they have reason to have been a part of it, so therefore they're a part of it. And everybody goes, ah, thank God, because we can't stand to have something unresolved. Mm -hmm. We can't stand to have it you know, be out there in the mystery of something and not know. We, we are like sort of, we're validation seeking missiles. We are seeking the validation for the things that the way we see the world and the way things need to make sense. And I think that that's how it works. And so then in the media, you have, you know, just a few people who have a lot of power can say, well, it's this, this, or this. And everybody goes, okay. And we don't question it. Because yeah. it's easier to have somebody else think and make sense. Right. Plus. Right. Yeah. And that's why it is so important now more than ever to trust your decision making strategy. Yeah. Because with all of, you know, what's a lie, what is truth, you know, it's like crazy. Uh, you know, the, the lines are getting blurred. Things are getting and mixed. And, and how do we know what is true or not? We don't. The only thing that we can do is follow what is true for ourselves. 
follow our own true decision-making strategy, which is what's going to help us navigate through you know, all of the propaganda, all of the, the lies, the deceit, the, the truths, the not truths, et cetera. Yeah, Lavina. Okay. Oh, there you Can go. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, what's coming to mind for me is how the conscious thinking mind likes black and white thinking, you know, it's mm. a this or a that. And that what our decision-making strategy does for us is allows each of us to have our own personal perspective of the truth and when we come into a system like this, we get to see that everybody has their own perspective and we don't have to see things exactly the same way. In fact, we're not designed to see things exactly the same way. So this is part of that process is, well, you know, this f camp over here judges this as logical. And yet these people over here won't see the logic in that. And so this is kind of like the agree to disagree mm -hmm. that everybody has their own personal perspective and you can avoid the manipulation if you just go back and trust your own authority instead of everybody else out there, because that's where you're getting manipulated to their perspective or point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Natalie. Yeah. So we have Alex with us uh, here live and uh, uh, having a trade for in uh, uh, his or her, I think his live work. So he, he'd like to share. Uh, so I'm going to allow Alex to talk. So you can talk now and mute yourself, Alex, and share how you experience straight four. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, yeah. Alex. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so I'm not super familiar with the specifics of straight four and life work and all that, but as far as what's on the screen here, a lot of this... Uh, makes sense to me just from uh, experience so far um, so i guess where i've seen this the most in my life <coughs> is uh within business <coughs> excuse me and um i think one of the the aspects that was mentioned previously about manipulating logic uh, occurs most frequently in marketing mm. Ah. Yeah, and mass media has seems to also have developed a, a very frighteningly effective formula for amplifying what marketing already does, um, and really, really playing on people's uh, sh shallow capacities to formulate logic and. Uh, they'll they'll do that with things like an uh, authority bias by having experts or yes uh, yep. other people with credentials of some sort and I think that's one of the, the terrifying things about going to school or getting like a certification or a master's program or anything like that where you're given the certification or credentials of some form um, because then it opens that door for being set up as an authority bias. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are you I, from, Alex? I'm currently in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. Oh, really? Oh, wow. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I'm down in Centennial. Oh, wow. Amazing. Okay. Alex, you brought up something I think is really uh, two things I think are really important. One is definitely in the marketing. And um, we see that, of course, in business a lot. I see that a lot in um, working with my clients around marketing. But I used to do work um, at a university in research and doing psych research and being on the back end and seeing how the data collection was done and then how the analysis of the data is done. And we have in this country, we have this bias that scientists, you know, doesn't matter what the field is, but that scientists are like gods practically that they, whatever they're talking about. Right. But it is so interesting because even though you're not supposed to have a quote unquote bias, depending on the question that you ask, that's how you're going to use mm. the data. You're going to analyze the data. So your data is only as good as the question. 
And it's really only as good as the col how you collected it and, and the intentionality behind it because it, we, it could have been skewed in many, many different ways. Yes. And it is not objective. It, it's tr it strives to be objective. Science strives, but it can't be because there's way too many factors. And even though they factor in all of those biases and the, uh, you know, the error and all of that, and in the statistics, it's still manipulation of numbers and data to get information. And anybody could take that information and write another article about it. We see it all the time. And uh, it is, it's scary because, you know, most people don't want to think that much. Yeah. They don't want to ask questions. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, that's, <clears throat> that's a really good, uh, like, overview of what's going on in the background. Uh, yeah. People have been part of um, psychology <laughs> programs to uh, different mm -hmm. degrees. And uh, the, the scientific aspect that you mentioned where there's... Um, I guess the short way to describe it as a confirmation bias where yeah. the, the questions will come up and be like, all right, this is what we want to figure out. And then it's almost as if, uh, and it also depends on like the, the agenda of either yeah. the researchers or the people who are um, funding the research. Exactly. So, yep. Too. Yep. So, and that again, it just introduces additional biases that have to be integrated into that research. Um, but uh, where I was going with that is the, the confirmation biases that come in um, from those different avenues and people's agendas. It's like, all right, well, yes, we can um, do this, but it's almost like the experiment um, for the research becomes the self-fulfilling prophecy in and yes. of itself because yeah. then they're like, all right, well, this is what we're seeking out. And <laughs> more often than not, because there's yeah. relatively low complexity for experimentation, it's possible to formulate the experiment so that it uh, at least points to the results as having some degree of truth yeah mm -hmm. yeah yep. but it's a it's an unfair tipping of the scale so to speak yeah yeah actually what is interesting is that uh bg5 and, and human design is also a logical system eh? uh, as we call it and as Ra called it and i haven't found any um how do you say that? Illogicality behind it yet. <laughs> yeah. But then, right. you know, there's also beauty in logic too, yeah. when yeah. it's used properly. Absolutely. So not all logic is, is bad. It's, it's there and it's there for a purpose. It's there for a reason because mm -hmm. we are searching for those answers. We are searching for certainty. And like I mentioned before, the shadow of, uh, of conceptualization is trying hard to be certain. Um, so, so, um, so we're seeking and searching this type of, you know, logical explanation that will have us have some kind of secure future moving forward into the future. So I love what you shared, Alex. Thank you so much for, for participating and sharing that. Very, very rich. Mm -hmm. And, and what, we're, what we're now going to take a look at is, in a sense, sort of that logical progression. I thought this was really interesting. I, I mapped on also um, the life work themes so you can kind of see how logic progresses. Um, so the first uh, life work theme is about the personal focus, is about the explanation. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to explain things, right? We want to explain in a logical way how things operate. And so we have um, three of the different qualities. So quality one is this pleasure. And it's this pleasure in finding the answer, right? If you think about, oh, I finally figured it out, right? There's a pleasure in that. There's a like, oh, ah, yes, I've discovered something. 
You know, so this quality one is the foundation. It's this pleasure in finding the answer. And then once you found the answer, we can see that quality two is this acceptance, you know, that the, we have this acceptance. Oh, wow, we found the answer. Then there's this acceptance that the answer is true, right? We sort of suspend judgment and wow, we found the answer. We finally got into the bottom of it and we sort of suspend judgment and accept that whatever that, you know, logical conclusion is, uh, is correct. And then it can also lead, and, and we can see the third quality, we're in this third quality today, so we're going to talk a little bit more about this third quality, but then we have this irresponsibility. This is enjoying the formula for the formula's sake, regardless of its application, right? This is, so it's like, you know, oh, well, I'm going to start to apply this to everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and sort of this irresponsibility of, again, the, the irresponsibility, this is, uh, and quality three, sort of this trial and error process. It's the pioneer. It's kind of like, oh, if I can, if that formula is true over here, then it must be true over here. And, you know, just kind of enjoying the, the formula regardless of its application. Right. So that's more of kind of the, the personal focus. How do you explain things? You know, then it's interesting because then it moves to the steadfast focus, which is where formalization comes into play. And what's interesting is that quality four is actually what we were talking about. It actually is the liar. Now, again, you know, lying can, can, work in both positive and negative ways. We have a, a very negative connotation about what the liar is, but this is the potential danger to see fantasy as fact. You know, and what have I talked about, you know, quite a bit as we're in this, this time of illusion and delusion, seeing fantasy as fact. You know, this can be great, for example, if you're an actor or an actress, right? Because you're lost in that sort of fantasy of what you're acting. Um, you know, so this is a really great quality to have as an actor or an actress. But again, you know, there's that potential danger of falling into it and seeing that fantasy, what you're acting as actually being fact. Then we have the transpersonal focus. And it's interesting, we go from explanation to formalization to revolution. So it's almost like, like realizing that things, hmm, wait a minute. There's something a little bit off here. If we take a look at the fifth quality, this is seduction. In a sense, this is allowing others to assume responsibility. And one of the things about the fifth quality is that they are here in times of crisis. So, so this seduction is allowing others to assume responsibility, like, oh, look at this formula. And then when it falls apart, they can step in and go, oh, you know what? The, here, uh, you know, I have a different way of looking at it. Remember, and, uh, you know, this can also be the, the heretic, you know, stepping in with something new and different kind of to change things around. This is also the messenger, you know. So basically, you know, instead of being right up front and going, no, this isn't right, they wait until people, in a sense, sort of fall on their face and they go, see, this logic isn't correct. See, this logic isn't right. And, you know, I'm going to lead you out of this crisis that this logical, you know, this logical thinking pattern has created. And then we can see that quality six can be this excess. So this is the repeated and conscious abuse of the norms. So this can also be where it gets out of hand. And in many cases, you know, if, if you take a look at especially mainstream media nowadays, um, I think in many respects, a lot of it has gotten out of hand. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you think that, you know, most of the, um, most of the media is controlled by just a handful of corporations, think of the power that's possible in controlling how people think or how people th see things or what people believe. Um, and so this is, you know, the repeated and conscious abuse of the, of the norms. So this is the repeated message over and over and over and over and over again to get people to believe it, even though, you know, it may have been disproved, even though it may not hold water anymore, even though it may not, you know, we've poked holes, you know, in what the logic is. If you keep repeating it, right, people, you know, you're hoping that people will continue to believe it. So it's just kind of interesting seeing this whole progression. Mm. 
I have a contribution from uh, Facebook if you like. Yeah, absolutely. It. Yeah. So we have a Doa who has her um, core essence, conscious core essence in the steadfast focus formalization. So uh, this is something that she shared here. Oops. I, all of a sudden there's a bunch of comments. She says she has trait for quality for as her conscious core essence or sorry that's the unconscious core essence mm -hmm. can pretend it's logical and wants to tell others how the formula works and applies not always interested in fact or reality and she said it took her some getting used to for the language to get over that energy to get into that energy behind that uh quality the liar and what I like to think of it as is like an actor, somebody who's influential and attempting to get that out to the people to see because of what they're formalizing, what they're actually recognizing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and that steadfast focus, that quality four is about influence. Mm -hmm. And so again, you can, you can influence people in positive ways and you can also influence people in negative ways. Right. So again, you know, don't get caught up in because again, we can, we have these sort of narrow negative stereotypes of about what these mean. So again, opening up your awareness to, you know, there's two sides of the coin and it's there for a purpose. It's there for a reason. It's neither good nor bad. Chris or, or Natalie. <laughs> I'm laughing at uh, Natalie's cat that just keeps <laughs> wanting to, it's like, it's logical that you're doing something and the cat wants to come in and lay on your lap or on the keyboard because that's what cats do, right? So anyway, just <laughs> laughing <laughs> about that. But um, yeah, I think it is, it's really important that we do, you brought up a good point, which is that, that there isn't, there's nothing inherently wrong with logic and mm -hmm. that there is, and that it, each one of these traits and the or each one of these qualities of of the trait of logic is and the progression it's not about like a cut and dry thing it's a synthesis of mm -hmm. many aspects of the design and really having to take it into context and so one of the things to be really aware of as you're watching this and you're like oh my god is you know, that person or that explains this is to, there's a lot more going on here and mm. it's nothing is as black and white, you know, um, like Lavino is pointing out, it's not just black and white. It's not this or that, even though that would be the most logical things to, to come to. So again, just, you know, just see it more as this is a way we human beings and our, the way our minds work to navigate the world. Yep. And, and instead of it being about right and wrong, it's a way of navigating and we can, we can manipulate that in a way that keeps people down or liberates them. Yes. And so are you speaking from a place of keeping people down or liberating them? And that is that the potential for the fourth line trait to solve a real problem versus creating problems that people then logically need to solve and they just make stuff up. Right. Bleep. Exactly. That would have been a bleep. They make bleep up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any other um, uh, comments coming from uh, Facebook or from our uh, Zoom room? No, so just for clarification, Alex were, was asking if qualities are lines in human design. And uh, yes, they are. We call them qualities. So we call gates traits in the G5. And the qualities are qualities of your trait. So yes, they are lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Good question. If you're new, that's, you know, we, we have slightly different language in VG5, more uh, accessible for, uh, you know, day-to-day -day life and, and business. And, um, but you get used to it and it's way more practical and logical. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Amen, 5-1, sister. Totally. <laughs> exactly. Power to the fifth line. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> 
So, yeah. uh, so let's, uh, let's continue. We've taken a look at sort of the logical progression so we can kind of see where quality three plays into this. And so also realize that this is, in a sense, what's sort of in the background for the, for the next few days as well, this, you know, this logical uh, progression as we go through. So what we're taking a look at in the quality three is this irresponsibility. Um, this is the easy way out or not. And remember, this is sort of the, the pioneer. So it's, you know, kind of with trial and error. Um, so this is the general refusal to apply oneself diligently when one can get by with much less effort, right? So why put in all that, the hassle? You know, why, why shape, you know, why, you know, question the logic, right? It's just easy, easier to just go with it. It's just easier to, to believe it. So the elevation, uh, the elevation is the potential to enjoy the formulas with no regard to their practical application. That's what we talked about earlier. You know, the art is more valued than the artist. Uh, so, you know, so it's really about, oh, you know, look how cool this formula is and I'm just going to go with it and not really question it. The challenge is the potential to justify such a process in order to maintain it. So the rationalization and the irresponsibility as an act of refocalization. So basically, again, just continuing to repeat, you know, this particular formula, whether it's true or, or not, you know, whether it, it applies or whether it doesn't. All right, so that's the, the quality three of irresponsibility. And so that's uh, sort of what's there in the, in the background for today. I'm, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not going to discuss. So my daughter is kind of refusing to study, really, because uh, she is of the new generation. I can find everything in internet and uh, Google. She's 13 years old. I'm not going to uh, discuss any of her future today because <laughs> I'm just getting this irresponsibility of the refusal to uh, to apply uh, the, the diligence. <laughs> exactly. That's that like, oh, well, that's a that great example. Sense. Yeah, it's a really good example. It's also when when you think about somebody who is um, <clears throat> justifying their bad behavior. Mm. So it's sort of like, you know, well, not that I ever have done this, but it's sort of like, oh, I could have that cookie. Well, or I could have a couple or, oh, well, why not? I mean, I've already had one, so I might as well. It's like you just take this logic. It's really bad logic, but you can justify anything and look mm -hmm. at what people have gotten away with and what we've let people get away with for, oh, well, that's just the way so-and-so is, or that's just the way boys will be boys or whatever. Like I'm just kind of using some things that we've we have dismissed and said, well, that's just logical and we've used it. And people, you can use it in addiction. You can use mm, it in, um, you know, any kind of way that we're like, well, I really want this thing. I'm craving this thing. I really, I desire it. And therefore the most logical way to stop craving it is to have it. So da da da. right. We have this call. We just get it all down to this very cause and effect and then we rationalize all of that and lie to ourselves. And that's yeah. how we can perpetuate and create stories even more on an internal level, which then become stories that we tell other people. So yeah. that's just one, another thought that I had about that, kind of similar to what you, where you were going a little bit there, Natalie. Exactly. No, I, yeah. Exactly. And, and just tying that into exactly what we were talking about, you know, at the very beginning, you know, the energy to beguile, <laughs> right. And, yeah. um, you know, this, uh, the, and succeed despite ignorance, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've made up a, a logical reason why we need to have that extra cookie. Yeah. <laughs> I can come up with really, I am so good at logic when it comes to that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't have just one. I have to have two. I want to have a balanced we want to have balance here. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. All you, everybody out there is like, yeah, 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 I think I've done that. Lisa has got a really good point here. She's contributing and saying, uh, just because you can justify it doesn't make it true or correct for you. Yeah. It is important to know that the mind can justify anything. So not using that as a basis yep. for action. 
Exactly. That is why you do not want to make decisions from your mind. Your mind can make up reasons for anything Mm -hmm. and everything. And it can sound incredibly logical. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Right. And, and again, notice when we, we have these logical ex- excuses, right. We're sort of, um, you know, beyond the responsibility because it's logic, right. It's, yeah. it's logical that since I've had one cookie, it's not going to hurt to have, you know, three or four more. I've had them anyway. Right. Yeah. And I'll, I'll pick up my diet, you know, tomorrow. So that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As I said yeah. earlier, Oh. Yeah. As I said earlier, our mind, we are validation seeking missiles. Mm. So if we have a thought, we will find evidence in our world that validates the thought yeah. no matter what, whether we're conscious of it or not. So when we have a thought or a belief, whether it's passed down to us or our mind made something up, it literally clouds the way we see the world. And Mm. we will find the evidence for it and say, see, I see the evidence out there. Even if it's completely unrelated, we will find it. Even the way to uh, dishonor your decision-making strategy is what you just said. So you doubt, for instance, I have the the gut response. uh, And then if, if I'm kind of uncertain or I'm taking a route and I don't know what the uh what the success will be or or you know it's it's completely irrational or my uh, family would call me crazy but i have this gut response but if i would not trust my gut response i would use this illogic or this logical reasoning to go like no but you know you shouldn't do it because blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. and then you have so it's it's a brilliant way to um how do you say that to 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 distrust your uh, yeah. decision making strategy? Yeah, exactly. So again, decision making strategy, you know it, and if there's a lot of reasoning to it, if it doesn't come from your body, but if there's a lot of mind reasoning to it, it's usually not your decision making strategy. Yep, yep, exactly. That's the quickest way to know if you're following your decision making strategy or not. If there's a whole story and there's a whole logical reasoning behind why you're making the decision because of this, this, and this, it's, you're probably not following your decision-making strategy. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Alex says, I haven't read it, but I'll just read it. Society has experienced so much hard space warfare uh, that most people are shut down. People need to push their minds back down to their heart space to learn the truth or at least their potential, their personal truth. The truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And from Facebook, yeah, Lavina says, you can, you can talk, Lavina. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for an opening. We have a couple of uh, comments and questions. Doha wow. Was, yeah, absolutely. It was adding to Chris, uh, just because this is a quote from Ra, just because something is logical doesn't mean that the logic is sound. So good point with that one. And then we also have Art. You might remember him from our Profit Potential. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last Hi, Art. Time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he uh, was asking, what is the Profit Potential of trait for? I have it in my open function, our, uh, conceptualization function. So the trait for Profit Potential theme is about selling certainty through formulas in order to avoid irresponsibility. So I'm wondering how that shows up for you, Arndt. Would love to hear from you uh, if you'd like to share if there's any recognitions or further questions on that. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah, uh, again, you know, I think um, just to kind of, I'm just looking at the time and just to kind of wrap up this discussion here, because I think we could go on and on and on. Um, but really, um, you know, start to take a look at, and we'll, we'll have our, our last words from everyone here uh, in just a moment, but really starting to take a look at, you know, where is that, that logical reasoning getting in the way uh, or not? And yes, Natalie, did you want to say something? Well, Brad has got his hand raised and I would love to oh, have yeah. him share. Yeah? yeah okay. Absolutely. Yeah, there you go, Brad. You can share now. Oh, thank you very much. Hey, uh, Brad. Hey, Hi, nice to see everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just wanted to point out that we're having this conversation 
because we have evolved somewhat. Uh, if we go back generations and into the decades, everybody lived from logic, whether they had logic in their design or not. Uh, they simply followed the pattern of logic. It was logic to do this, 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 and this is how you lived your life. We're able to have this conversation now because we don't do that. And so in listening to this conversation, whether you have picked it up or not, it's a conversation about logic, but we've talked a lot about illogic. Mm. And that's what it's all about, is recognizing how illogical life is on this planet and has been, and how things are evolving to a point where we're stepping out of that illogic and we're stepping into self-empowerment where you have to do what, and I'll use the term, what may be logical or illogical for you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So that's just what I wanted to share. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful point. Mm -hmm. Hey, Thank you. Yeah. You're very welcome. <laughs> Wonderful. My kitties join me now, too. <laughs> <laughs> These cats, they like the logic, don't they? <laughs> Well, yes. So um, let's um, just real quickly, let me just do this and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap everything up with our, our, last, uh, our last words here. So, oops, hold on one second. Um, so uh, once again, if you are uh, new and, you're, and you don't know what your career type is, we've talked a lot about your decision-making strategy. So if you're not aware of what your decision-making strategy is, uh, you can get a free report. Uh, so you can go to our website at uh, the bg5businessinstitute.com. Uh, and you can, uh, you can get your free report. Also, we wanted to let you know that we have some free classes coming up uh, so that you can uh, kind of get a feel for uh, what we're going to be uh, teaching here coming up. So we have uh, new courses uh, that start in September. And our courses start three times a year in May and September and January. So September's coming up. Uh, if you want to check out the BG5 Foundation course, the first class is a trial class, so you can check it out. And both Natalie and Lavina are going to be uh, teaching the foundation course. Uh, Natalie on Thursday, Lavina on Friday. So you can pick the time and the date that works best for you. So uh, come check out the BG5 Foundation course. We also have the BG5 Career and Business Certification course uh, that's coming up as well. Uh, so, uh, so again, with the, first, uh, the first class is free. Natalie's going to be teaching that uh, so that you can get a flavor for what BG5 certification is all about. Uh, so we invite you to those three cl free classes. Also, Chris is going to be teaching our uh, BG5 uh, Profit Potential uh, workshops. He's going to start with uh, communication and action, um, and that's going to be starting in September as well. So uh, be sure to check that out. All right. So let's wrap everything up. And, uh, and what last words do uh, each of you have on our, uh, on our panel? And again, if there's anything in Facebook or anyone who's here in our Zoom room live that would like to, to add something, uh, we invite you to share as well. So what are some uh, last thoughts, comments, or things that uh, for people to think about and to be aware of, especially over the next couple of days, but just in general as well as we take a look at trait four? Uh, I just love how Brad can give it an sort of another dimension and looking at it whereas we get into the discussion in, a, in how we see the world and he just steps out of it and goes like well there's logic and illogic but actually we're, we are now as far as that we can see logic and illogic and amazing too. And, it, and it's the brilliance of the evaluator. Yes. Um, the evaluator is yes. only 1% of the population, you know, and that is really what the evaluator is here to do. And, and, uh, and Brad is such a beautiful representation of that, that uniqueness and that perspective and that being able to see that big picture. So uh, okay. yes, thank you so much, Brad, for, uh, for contributing. And thank you, Alex, as well, uh, mm -hmm. for, for what you contributed. It was really, really rich. So Really yeah. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to have you in my class, Alex. <laughs> 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 you sound like you you get it. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. And uh and uh Chris, anything that you would like to uh to say or add? Yeah, 
Shauna, I was just thinking, uh, listening to Brad, thinking about how um, for those of us who are very cyclical or really in the rhythm of the universe, there is a logic. There is a logic that underpins uh, the natural world. And so it's not like we made this up, right? It's really about that discernment and, and using your decision-making strategy to uh, be aware and discern between what is logical, what's illogical, and empowering yourself to trust yourself. If something smells fishy, it probably is. And so, you know, just watch that over the next couple of days. We're going to see where logic is being twisted and where it's going to be untwisted. So use your decision-making strategy and watch in the media as things are unfolding and uh, see what's true for you. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And Lavina. The thing that comes to mind for me is um, to let go of any judgments, you know, it, it's all perfect the way that it is. And it's just <laughs> fine to be able to see patterns and to recognize the this and the that and to, not, to be, to go gently on yourself mm. and on others, because we all have our own unique perspectives and we cannot really truly change some things the way that we see things it's just the way that it is and to not take um uh, too much to heart if yeah. somebody doesn't see things the way that you see things mm -hmm. just agree to disagree let go of trying to be right wrong good yeah. bad you know just take it easy a little bit with this next week because it is kind of stressful there's a lot of um pressure to to tell people how certain you are of certain things. And if you run into trying to argue, it's usually a waste of breath. That's, yeah. That's my perspective on it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Beautifully said. And, uh, and Alex, would you, would you like to actually, um, I know you, you typed it in. Would you like to actually um, uh, say it? Oh. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah. So, the thing I add, I'll add is that I believe it would also be really beneficial as a, a takeaway from this to really take notice of how people are using logic differently. Because um, we kind of skirted over that part a little bit and how logic can be used differently and the different ways that people um, like people's different role in having or utilizing logic um, so th that's definitely one thing that, yeah that um, the different qualities and uh, I think it also be beneficial for people to feel okay after noticing how people use different logically to also hold those same people accountable for the manner in which they're utilizing the logic that they're presenting. Mm. Um, because I think that comes back to boundaries essentially is where if people are utilizing logic in a way that is not necessarily true for you or they're trying to press it onto other people um they they need to know that in some way shape or form so that they have an opportunity to adjust themselves accordingly <laughs> yeah yeah which of these qualities do you have alex i was i was just curious um what i was messaging with natalie earlier it looks like my uh my body graph chart has uh, so it's gate four line one okay in, so in four essence so that's like the quality one is that what we talked about natalie yes okay so pleasure in finding the answer um so i'm a i'm a one three type investigator uh martyr so that definitely vibes with me in Know, investigating and then being able to find that answer 
is yeah I do get a kick out of that <laughs> <laughs> wow beautiful yeah perfect and I, I love what you said Alex um, because I think it is really important to, you know, kind of realize that, you know, logic can be used in different ways. You know, logic can be used in positive ways. Uh, logic can be used in not so positive ways. And so I think it's really important, um, just like what Alex said, to, to pay attention to the different ways that people use logic. Listen to where, you know, logic or people are explaining things or trying to justify things or trying to have certainty around things. So again, take a look at how, you know, like I said, in your world, for yourself personally, in the media, um, taking a look at you know, where does logic show up and where are, you know, we, you know, where are we trying to, to force this logical progression? Where, where is it showing up? Where is it not showing up? So um, really, really rich, rich discussion. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you, each and every one of you. And uh, I love having the participation. So thank you to everyone who is able to, uh, to participate and share as well. It makes it even more rich. Uh, so once again, thank you, thank you, thank you, and uh, be sure to uh, to join us next week. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head what we'll be taking a look at next week, but uh, we're going to continue uh, this progression and uh, and take a look at what's in store for us next week. So again. Um, like us on on uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, follow us um, again. These are really rich discussions, and if you want to be a part of the uh, discussion, uh, again, great to have you here. So we will sign off for today. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and uh, we'll see you on the next week. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye.